Okay, one of my MBA students in my fixed income securities class had a question on how to solve this problem. And uh, the book doesn't explain the, you know, how to get some of the numbers very well. So it's a good problem to go over. It came out of this book, um, uh, the CFA Institute. It's a book in order and it allows you to study for the CFA. The name of the book is Fixed Income Analysis. So this problem came out of this book. A very good book. Uh, it was chapter 9, problem 15, I believe. Okay. So here's the problem. It says, uh, well, I'm not going to read the problem to you. You can read the problem, pause the video, and read it. I don't want to waste a lot of time on the video. But what I did is I took all that information and uh, I put it, I just typed it into Excel so we could work with it. So just let me paste it in here. So, um, so, uh, so now we have our, our different um <clears throat> we have this information typed in and and, and I, I added some extra things here um it says it's it says it's a, this is a floating rate bond so in other words the coupon rate floats support according to some external index that's agreed in the contract before on the bond right and it happens to be capped at five percent so the highest the coupon can get it's an annual coupon one year reference rate Set in arrears means uh, from your book. I'll just give the. I'll give you the. The. Uh, I'll give you the uh, definition from the book. Set in arrears means uh, the coupon rate is set at the end of the coupon period, or in other words, the payment date and the setting date are the same as are one and the same. So, um, so this is a forward rate, right? So this is a, at the end of year two. This is what you're going to get for a coupon. Now, since it's capped at five percent, we not we're not going to get this. Well, this, but anyway, they they calculated something called a binomial uh, interest rate tree. And Norman use a binomial interest rate tree. Use um, this is kind of a side note. This doesn't have anything to do with solving the problem. But the way you create this, if you look in the book and this chapter, you'll find this. It has it up and down. And normally, you're going to assume it's fifty percent chance it's going to go up and a fifty percent chance it's going to go down. So you could. So using this 10% volatility, that this should, I'm just going to do it right beside it, this should be equal to, um, we have the down as this one, times EXP, and it's going to be 2 times the implied volatility that was on page 478, and then times the square root of 1. Of course it's 1, I'll just put square root of 1 anyway. Square root of 1 is 1, but we'll just go ahead and do the math. And so, so the up, the up, the R up should be 4.3. So we know that they didn't use that 10% that the book told you they use. This is a side note, like I'm saying, because they already gave you these numbers. And we're going to use the numbers they had. But I was curious, you could find out the implied volatility they used to create these two. So what I could do, I could go to data and go to solver. And we can set uh, this to a value of whatever this is, which is a, uh, 4.5027. Make sure you put the percent sign, right? And we want to change this implied volatility. And then if I solve and go, okay, so they use a 12%. So this is, so, so they, they assumed a 12% interest rate voluntarily. That's what takes it, the you know, to make this formula. Anyway, that's a side note. So um, let me just, uh, we'll leave 12% because that's what it really is. But you guys don't need to know that because they already gave you the numbers, right? They gave you these numbers. So, 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 but anyway, that's what they used. They didn't use the 10% that was on the previous page. They used 12%. All right. So, so anyway, so we want to find the value of this bond. Now, one thing you want to realize, this is capped at 5%. So the seller of the bond is being protected because he doesn't have to pay these two interest rates. He only has to pay 5%. So it makes the value of bond less, less to the buyer, right? Or actually, it's going to be to the seller too, right? Because no one, no one should buy it for more for more than that, you know. When they put that cap in there, all right. So let's go ahead and just do the solution. We know it's going to be less. Um, it's going to be less than a hundred dollar par value. If everything was at par, okay. So let me go home. Hundred dollars per hundred dollar par value. So let me just go ahead and. Uh, so I'm going to put some information here just to start and to save time. 
So we're going to assume the par value is $100. And the way this works is you got to start from the back and work forward, right? So we know that this first one, the most you can pay is going to be equal to $100 times parentheses 1 plus 5%. So I'm not going to use um, Excel formulas here because um, you can't use Excel when you're studying for the CFA. So we'll just use regular formulas, but I'll just type them in. So you could type that into your calculator very easy, but we're just going to, so we'll just do math formulas. And also the value it has here is going to be, well, I could just uh, copy this down. Why well, not just do it again? It's going to be equal to a hundred dollars times uh, parentheses one plus this All right so we know that this one let me form format to the not the same practical format all these the same that way so we know this one we're not going to use so let me just go ahead and strike that through we're not going to use that we're going to use this one let me put the formula in here All right and then uh so and then the next bond down. So now we got to calculate what the value would be here. Again, this is going to be max at 5%. So we know it's going to be equal to this. It's capped, right? Capped at 5%. All right. And then, but it, but it should have paid equals one equals $100 times parentheses one plus this so at the floating rate you didn't get that floating rate right right so let me format this the same so you're going to get this one again because it's capped at five percent okay and this last one it's going to be at the floating rate because you're not going to be above the cap so it's going to be equal to uh, 100 dollars times parentheses one plus this and that's going to be what it's, what the value is going to be if you go down that branch, right? All right. So remember that you start out here. There's a 50% probability it's going to go up here. A 50% probability it's going to go down here. Use this in order to calculate this vol using this volatility and this. You can calculate those two numbers. Then you're here, and then it's 50% again using these volatilities. But we got to work backwards now from that. So we started with this end. So now we got to calculate um, um, year two. Right, so year two is going to be equal to, well, um, this is what you got, and you're going to discount it back on what you should have, the rate you should have got, which is this. Oops, I did that wrong. Divided by parentheses, one plus. Remember when you're taking the present value of something, you divide it by one plus. Okay. So um, let's take take that out a couple places, 98.714, right? And we can copy this down, copy, paste, and then we want to make sure these are in the right places. This has to be to right here, right? And then copy this down, paste it here. And very similar, this one's going to point to here. Okay, so that's that's the value. Now here's the tricky part to get from here to here, right? From here to here, you have to take the. Remember, these are 50% probability, so you have to take the value of this and they take the average of these two values discounted back. So what it's going to be? This is what the book doesn't tell you how to do. So what you're going to do? You're going to start out with it's going to be equal to this. Remember, this is a forward rate, so it's going to be plus. $100 times 4.052. Okay, that's the forward rate we had on that branch. And then you're going to divide it by parentheses 1 plus, again, the forward rate you had on that branch. And let's take this out a couple places again. In fact, let's, uh, let's format all these. Format Painter. Format them all the same. Right? And uh, maybe I should put these formulas in here. You guys can pause the video and look too, but 
Sometimes it's easier if I put the formula. Right? And then uh so that's 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 the top one. But the problem is we have the bottom one too, right? So so um so we just have this part of the you know, it's fifty percent probability it's gonna be this. The other fifty percent probability is gonna you're gonna use this number and discount it back, right? So so we could probably go in here, let me do it a little bit longer. We'll go to the front of here, we'll say the average, because the average is fifty percent. The average of that. And then comma, now we're going to take this, I'm going to go parentheses, parentheses, just like we did in this one, this plus $100. Again, we're on this branch, so it's going to be this, divided by parentheses, 1 plus this. And then close the parentheses on the average. Okay, so what did I make a mistake? I probably needed one more parentheses. So it's 99.3805. And we can do the same. So so for this bottom one, we can do the same thing. So let me copy this. And let's just make sure we have these on the right things. So this has to be at the 100, right? And... Let me let me start this. Let me do it from scratch. So this is equal to the average. Sometimes trying to make it. So now we're going to do, do the top one. So it's going to be this plus 100 times this. Close the parentheses. Divided by parentheses 1 plus. Now we're going to discount it back at the same rate. Okay. And then the other one's going to be parentheses this plus the this times this and then discount it again and back at the same rate one plus plus this this should be 100 by the way and then close the parentheses on that and then uh So, so that's the answer to that one. Okay. And then finally, let me move this out so you can see the whole. I don't know. I guess I had, where did I have an extra? I have an extra parentheses here. I don't need this. I don't need this extra parentheses right here. Okay. All right, so now finally we can go to the to, to, to this one. It's going to be equal to um, the average. Just working our way backwards. It's going to be average of parentheses. This plus 100 times. Um, Hold on, I gotta think for a second. Times this. Okay. Divided by parentheses, one plus this. And then uh, parentheses, this plus 100 times this. Divide by parentheses one plus this. Close the parentheses, close the parentheses in the average. Okay, so I made a mistake here. Let me just double check. Okay, I had to pause the video. I see my mistake. I forgot to put a times here. One little thing. That shouldn't be plus, that should be a times. And you get 99.697, uh, which would be equal to this divided by this, which would be, we can put this as percent. So it's 99.697% uh, of par value.
Okay, so that's the answer. Or if our part value is $100, it would be 996972 Okay? And that's the same thing as the answer of the book. Let me put that in here. So this is, you can verify that it's the same solution as the book, right? We have the same numbers. And so the answer would be in the book, the answer would be A, right? Now, so what, so, so, so what we could say is, uh, what's the value of that cap to the seller? Or you just say the value of the cap. Well, the value of the cap, this is a side note, this isn't in the question. It's going to be equal to this minus this. So it's going to be 30 cents. Or we're going to take it out a couple places. 30.032 cents per $100 per $100 of par value. Right? So that's the value of that cap. So I made the value, you know, that five to, if you're using 12% volatility and you're assuming these. Okay. So I anyway, hopefully that was interesting. Um, you might want to duplicate this because I, I, I might have this problem on exam, maybe with some different numbers, right? I won't make you do this part here. I won't make you calculate this, but I might do chapter 15, this problem 15 with different numbers on the exam. So it'd be wise of you to uh, crank this out on Excel so you know you have it right. That way if you change these numbers and this number, these numbers would automatically come out, right? All right, so everything, all these calculations down here should be based on what's under the given, right? And under this per value. All right, so I'm, if you like this video, my picture will come up. If you haven't uh, subscribed to my picture, my videos, my YouTube channel, you can click on my picture. Give me a thumbs up if you like it. Give me any comments. Thanks for watching.